thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. And today's topic, of course, will be running a local chapter. When I talk about local chapter, I'm specifically referring to OWASP. <laughs> That's what we're all here for. That's what we're doing. And as the, the president of the Denver, Colorado, United States OWASP chapter, I have a, a lot of things I can share with you, then that's going to be the purpose of this conversation today. Per the introduction, you can see this is some information about me. I'm so special because when you Google me, I actually have a little blurb that pops up, which is kind of interesting. Uh, <laughs> there's a, yeah, so I run a company called SpiderSec. We do penetration testing, offensive security, things like that. I'm a uh, instructor with SANS as well. I've been there for about seven years. And of course, I'm the president of the Denver OWASP chapter, as I mentioned a moment ago. So lots of different things I've done over the years. And I keep coming back to OWASP. I've been doing OWASP for longer than all those things. I've been engaged with OWASP probably for over a decade as an attendee, as someone who used to go to the meetings. And I, I still do go to the meetings. <laughs> now I run them. I don't, you know, I don't just participate as a, an attendee anymore. Uh, but I've been doing that for well over a decade, it's, it feels like, or uh, around that time. And that's what I keep going back to is the community involvement. It's giving back. It's having presentations. It's you know, sharing knowledge. And that's what it's really all about for me. And as time progressed, I found myself becoming more and more involved with my local chapter. And at one point, they were looking for some help. And I became a, a quote unquote board member. And from there, eventually became voted in as the president and now i have uh, a lot more responsibility and the same pay rate which is zero dollars <laughs> it's all volunteer anyway what's this all about this is a non-technical talk okay no api so no content security policies no zero days nothing like that this is all about if you're interested in running a local chapter of OWASP. And this could be, as you may know, OWASP being a global organization. This could be anywhere, any country that you're in, any city, state, whatever the case may be, territory. And this is going to be quickly, you know, in less than 30 minutes now, talking about how to go about doing it. So these are the basic topics we'll be discussing. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have at the end of it. So, what is a local chapter? Well, maybe you want to start one. Maybe you already have one. Maybe the one you have, no one is going to. Maybe COVID had a profound effect on your attendees that show up, and you don't long, you no longer really have a chapter because no one shows up anymore. We ran that issue when COVID started. We pivoted to virtual meetups, and that was fine. It worked our attendees slowly started going down. At our peak, which was a couple of years ago, we had literally over 100, 120 people show up every month or every other month when we did our, our regular meetup. And things were going very, very well. Lots of people, lots of engagement with the community, lots of great presentations, lots of fun. I mean, it was a really fun time. And then, you know, things changed. Uh, and I'm going to talk about some things that are going to change and some things you really need to be focused in on uh, to make your local chapter what you want it to be. And as you can see here, we still do meetups. We're not doing virtual anymore. We did in person for the first time in close to two years, three days ago. And we actually had people show up. <laughs> and this is the picture of the room at the venue where we went to. And I want to highlight a couple of things here. Okay, number one, we have happy people. <laughs> That's a good, important thing. Number two, if you look carefully, there's a bottle of alcohol there. And there's some alcohol right there. And that's important because people like to drink. <laughs> and there's a projector up here. And there's a screen right here. There's some HDMI connection. And there's, uh, as you can see, some silverware right here and some soda. So food, drinks, AV, which is in this case, audio, visual. People can see your presenter, people can hear your presenter, people can drink, people can eat, people can be relaxed, people can ask questions. That's what the meetup or the meeting should really be all about. That engagement, 
And that's what we got at this venue. And that's going to be an important piece to this whole conversation because that's what's going to be one of the differentiating portions of what's going to make you successful or not so much. And I can tell you, I've been to OWASP meetups across the country, and some of them have five people that show up. Some of them have 10 people that show up. <laughs> some of them uh, just go under. The chapters fail. They go inactive. And they just they don't have longevity, and that's something that I want to share with you as far as how to avoid that if you have the desire to do so. So what does it actually mean? Well, uh, have a chapter. As you can see here in the slide deck, uh, I grab that straight from this URL. The first half of this slide is just copy and paste from awas.org for slash chapters. This is what it's all about: having training, having talks, and networking. That's really what it comes down to. There's not a whole lot more, as far as my understanding <laughs> is concerned, that the having a chapter is all about. Really, it's, it's about getting community involvement, getting engagement, having people, like-minded people in the cybersecurity world come together. And you're, you're thinking open web application security project, OWASP, and the A stands for application, and the W is for web, you know, web apps, that should be important. But that's not what it's all about. We've had people do talks on everything from Wi-Fi hacking to hacking a human uh, to completely managerial-focused content. So it, it can be anything you want. As long as you're adding value, I think, and providing that, that space and that place and that time for people to get together and have discussion, a frank discussion about what's impacting their lives and their jobs and their careers and their cybersecurity choices that are going to help secure the world one piece at a time, I think that's really what we're trying to go for here. And part of that is having the talks. Part of that is having actual training sessions where people come in and learn how to do something. And some of that, really a big piece of that, in my mind, is networking. There's not one event that's gone by as far as our regular OWASP meetups where that I can think of anyway, where we didn't have multiple job openings, where at the beginning of the meetup, people stand up and they say, this is the name of my company, and these are the positions that we are actively looking for. Because as many of you probably know, there is pretty much zero unemployment in the cybersecurity world. People are always looking for, for filling positions. So there's no shortage of them out there. And networking, you know, this just helps make all of us better at the end of the day to fill those positions and hear the enterprise. All right, so my big thing here is What's in it for the members or the attendees who show up to the meetings? And what are we doing to give back to the community? That's kind of the approach I've taken over the years to, to help keep in mind when I'm thinking through the purpose, the mission, the objectives, and why I keep doing it for free. <laughs> All right, now people are the big piece to this. If you don't have people, you don't really have much of a chapter, okay? It doesn't have to be paid members. If we quickly go back a slide, you can see that anyone can attend. Anyone can attend, members and non-members. So people don't have to pay to show up. That's a core tenant, I would say, within the OWASP Foundation, not required. So getting people to show up is probably the number one thing we want to focus in on as far as building a chapter and having it longevity and driving people to, to continue coming. So how do we do this? That's the number one question. How do we get people to show up? I pointed out the bottle of alcohol. <laughs> Someone's drinking beer, okay? Some people are drinking liquor. Um, you know, that's not the whole point of this conversation. I don't want to dwell on that, but I also don't want to gloss over it, okay? People, some people enjoy that, and other people really like to eat food, and some people enjoy doing both, and <laughs> giving away free food and free alcohol <laughs> is, a, is a powerful kind of solution you have to this number one issue here of getting people to show up. If you can be in a position where you can actually offer those things to your attendees. And that's, of course, not the main focus here, and that's not what really it's all about, but it does go a long way. So I'm just trying to be upfront with you and straight up, okay? If you can offer these things, you're in a better position. Now you, not you, not out of your pocket, not spending money, that's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about you and your team. And I'll get more into that here in just a moment, um, because ultimately someone is paying for this. I'll talk about sponsorship as well. 
the real thing here is, like I said, we're trying to share our knowledge, offer some networking opportunities, having training, things like that. So getting people to show up, those are the, the selling points, if you will. You come to this meeting, you can network with other people. You can advance your career. You can trade business cards. You can do things like that. You can learn a new skill with training. You can sit and listen and learn something that you didn't know before that you can then take back to your place of business, to your day job, do something with that knowledge company better. That's a selling point. That's going to help get people motivated to get up and go to your meetings and hopefully show back up the next month and the month after that. It's not just you. It's a team effort. So we actually have to be thinking through what does a team look like? At the at my Denver OWASP chapter uh, here in Colorado, United States, we, we call each other uh, board members, like board of directors kind of. And these board members, I think it's just a fancy term for, for basically volunteers. <laughs> and we all try to do different things. So I have a couple of people dedicated to, to vetting our speakers and our, or slash presenters, whoever it is that's going to be doing the talk. Uh, we have people who are dedicated to trying to find sponsors. We have people that are dedicated to checking for venues and, or a new venue and trying to get a better price or trying to understand if we're, we're in a good situation in the venue with the venue we're currently at. And it's a hodgepodge. This is all volunteer work. So none of us get paid for any of this. And there's six of us plus a couple other folks because a lot of us, we, we just don't have time to dedicate to this like a, a full-time job or even a part-time job. This is just a few extra hours here and there, which is why, you know, it takes so many of us to accomplish what we accomplish. <laughs> I'm not saying we accomplish a lot, um, but finding speakers is a big thing. You think that, well, maybe, I, I'm not going to guess what you're thinking, but we have a link on our website where people can submit presentations 24 hours a day. And I think we've gotten like one or two of those in like the last five years, literally. Literally, no one uses that link to submit their talk. I don't know why. Maybe we don't advertise it well enough or something along those lines. But finding someone to present is a challenge. Finding one person, that's not that hard. Finding two people, okay, that's doable. If you have six meetups per year, that's one every other month, you might be able to do that for a year. But how about if you're doing this for like five years in a row or you're thinking long term? You got to find a process that works for you to find the speakers. Okay. And the other thing is you can't, I'm not going to say you can't. I'm going to say it's important to get people who are well, who are good, who are solid, who are high quality. If you just accept anybody, you get a potentially a low quality presentation. I want to sit there and list on these slides as a very boring voice who talks too quietly and puts deep and has no enthusiasm, or do you want someone who can actually present and have the slides come alive and share knowledge that someone didn't know and people are enthusiastic about it? That's the difference. People don't show up over and over if you have boring presenters or people who don't publicly speak very well. Okay, so you got to vet that presentation and the presenter. So vet the presentation, what does that mean? It means <laughs> we can't have someone in here just trying to sell a product. Okay, that's got a big piece of this, and that's a very big red flag for OWASP, and that's a red flag for your chapter as well. When you have attendees, You when you have attendees that uh, feel like they're being sold something, they don't show back up too often. And just a heads up, if you're on the Slack channel, I am paying attention to that. So if you have any questions along the way, I'll be happy to answer those. <laughs> and I appreciate that, Andre, by the, by the way. Um, so yeah, the sponsors is a big thing as well. You have to find someone who's going to give you money because, like I said, you're not paying for this out of your own pocket and food and alcohol and the venue itself, we're a couple thousand dollars in every single time we do a meetup. 
two to three thousand dollars, depending on how many people show up, you know. But generally, that's that's about what it is at the nice venue that we like, <laughs> because it's a, we've been to other venues where the audio and video they have like one TV and it's small, or they have no microphone, or they have these speakers that don't work very well, or there's a bar next door that's too loud. Okay, those are all issues you have to you have to think through. So that your team is going to be comprised of people who can actually help you with some of the stuff. Okay. That's what we're talking about. Now, like I said, the speakers, here's the person we had last Tuesday, Dan Ward. He came in along with Greg Foss, two pretty big names out here, or probably in the industry in general. You can Google them and people, you'll see what I'm talking about. Even little things like, if you look carefully, that's the name of this dude's company right up there. We didn't vet that well enough. You, know, you talk about your company once in the opening slide, that's cool. But like I said, if you're just sitting here, and your whole talk is about how your tool can save the day, people know they're being sold something. And we have to try to avoid that as much as possible if we want to have a quality presentation. So keep that in mind. No vendor pitches, number one. Now, you may be in a situation where you start talking to vendors or sponsors, which may be the same thing. And you say, hey, I saw you at the, uh, the RSA conference or at the, the OWASP conference, and I saw that you sponsored OWASP. Would you like to sponsor this local chapter? And they say, what's in it for us? <laughs> We're not just going to give you money for free. <laughs> yeah, you're a 51 c 3 and it's a tax write-off, but no, no, no. How about, how about we'll pay you the money you need to sponsor the event, and you let us present? Yeah, not so much. That's what we call, I believe, pay-to-play is the terminology we use there. And if the sponsor only wants to pay if they can send a person of theirs to present, you got to be very careful with that. Very careful. Okay. Otherwise, you're going to sour your attendees very quickly and poison the whole chapter because now it's like everyone just wants to pay money so they can go pitch their product to your people. They become a conduit. And that's not what we're trying to accomplish. So be very careful with that. The other thing here, of course, like I said about vetting the person, how good are they what they do? Are they doing public speaking regularly? How often are they doing it? Is the presentation any good? <laughs> uh, lots of things like this come into play. So you may be in a position where you need to turn down potential candidates for speakers because it's a risk. It's a gamble. If you have someone come in there who's never presented before, that's iffy. You don't know what you're going to get. It's, it's a gamble. That's what I mean by that. And, you know, there's two sides to that coin. You give someone a chance, give someone an opportunity. It's, it's a local chapter. It's an interesting topic. Why not? And that's something that I don't disagree with. It's just being careful because if they're not very good at what they do, as far as presenting the topic in a, in a meaningful way that resonates with people, then you may end up with a situation where you're, you're alienating some of the, the folks who showed up. So it, it's, it's a balancing act, okay? It's a balancing act, but definitely bet the speaker to the best of your ability, assuming you have you know, choices of who's going to speak. <laughs> the other thing here, of course, is what do we actually do? Well, we meet up, and there's a, a whole website called Meetup, meetup.com, I think is what it is, and this is what the OWASP Foundation um, has chosen for us to use as a platform to kind of keep track of registered attendees and share the details of the actual meetup, meaning this will be the website people go to to say, yes, I'm going to show up and get information about where the location is, what time it starts, who the speaker is, what the topic is, things like that. So meetup.com is where we host all that stuff. And this is where the attendees will, will go to obtain the information. And there's even a little bit of um, uh, messaging built into that, that website as well. Not that it's used too much, but that's what we're talking about. So meetup, this is typically every other month, depending on your chapter. There was a point in time where Denver OWASP chapter, we were aiming to do this once a month. We were When we were riding high and we had 120, 140 people showing up every month and we were knocking it out of the park, figuratively speaking, we were going for like, let's do this every month. This is awesome. This is a lot of fun and a lot of great involvement and a lot of good food and a lot of good people, <laughs> you know, because that counts. Um, and then things change. You know, a global pandemic hits. 
and now we're doing virtual meetups and uh, we're doing every other month when we can. Okay, so I think there is a, a mandate from OWASP, the foundation itself, that says if you want to be a quote unquote active chapter, then you need to do at least every other month meetups, which is where part of the the push for getting all of your components lined up really comes from, as in your speakers, your venue, your sponsors. Okay, because like I said, doing it once isn't that big of a deal. You, you can make that happen probably by yourself. Sustaining that over time is challenging. Okay, and that's part of partially why I'm doing this talk to help share some information that I have to maybe make your life a little bit easier should you choose to embark down this path. <laughs> so what happens, uh, as you saw from that meet, the uh, the picture I showed a moment ago, people come in, they sit down, they hopefully have some food, have something to drink, and sit back, relax, and you have a presentation. We go through announcements. We have opening slide deck that myself and my fellow board members will will talk about any upcoming events, any upcoming um, things that are of relevance to the community and general chapter announcements. For instance, we announced that uh, we're planning to do our regular annual conference next year, for example. And then the other big thing, of course, is you know keeping people entertained. And we were doing trivia. We did some Kahoot stuff. Uh, we had some rivalries between various attendees in a, in a playful, fun way. But uh, yeah, we used to give out gift cards. Um, there was a period of time we did it for many, many meetups in a row where we'd start with trivia, like a Jeopardy style, answer the questions, get people like an icebreaker, if you will. But, you know, put some skin in the game where the winning team, we get a, everyone on the team, we get a gift card to Starbucks or something simple like that, which of course is more money to be very straightforward with you, which is more of an ask from the sponsor. <laughs> like, do you want to sponsor this and buy some gift cards too? <laughs> yeah, so there's, yeah, it's not cheap and not free. Now the venue, of course, is the big, big thing here. Okay, this is probably, in my opinion, which is why I have it in red, one of the more difficult things to obtain and be satisfied with. Okay, you see a microphone, you see the video, that's the AV stuff I'm talking about. Does the venue have this for you? Does it work? Just two days ago, we ran into an issue with microphones. Okay, one of them worked just fine, but one of them isn't enough. Why not? Why isn't one microphone enough? There's only one person presenting, right? Yes, there is. But then the audience asks questions. So myself and my team will walk around the room and hand the microphone to an audience member so everyone can hear them. Okay, it's not a problem until you identify it as a problem. Like if it's a small room with 10 people, that's not an issue. You saw the size of the room we were in. That holds over 100 people. And it's big, I guess is the way to say it. And not everyone in the back can hear everybody in the front. So we have microphones and we have multiple microphones so people, the audience can be just as well heard as the presenter. It makes it a better experience, if you will. If you don't have that, that could be an issue. Projector, we had a place where it had a, a shoddy projector or the example I gave of small TV or, or just issues like that. HDMI or lack of HDMI. Someone had like a VGA hookup to this, this TV they, they wheeled in that looked like it was 20 years old. <laughs> it's like, what's going on here with this thing? Um, so venue, venue is real and these concerns are real. Food and drinks, that's also a big concern. If your venue doesn't allow outside food or drinks, that, that's not going to be good for you, it, unless, of course, they provide the food and drinks themselves. All right, but there's extra money associated with this type of stuff, so you got to keep that in mind. I, ideally, you're going to want to have all these things you see here in the bullet points. The, the food, good food, ideally, <laughs> if you can get quality food, and the regularity, so you can keep the third Wednesday of every month. That's the that's the OWASP meeting day, the third, and or, or whatever you choose for your chapter. Of course, I'm just highlighting the need for consistency, and also this, you know, location, location, location. You live in a big city, driving to this one centralized location is super convenient for half the people. The other half the people hate driving into the city because there's so much traffic, and they can, you know, they're going to complain about it or you know, it just it is what it is. So you got to keep those things in mind when you try to find a location. And then switching the location from month to month can also be an issue. You know, keeping that consistency. 
And of course, you'll be working with the OWASP Foundation as well. You're going to be creating money, hopefully, and maybe spending some money as well. And I think all spending is on hold, last I read. So the big thing here is if you can generate income and revenue for the foundation itself, you're in a much better position. Okay, this is a 501c3 nonprofit organization here is what we call it in the U.S., which is where it's you know, founded and incorporated or whatever the terminology is. And what we've typically done, my Denver OWASP chapter, that is, what we'll do is have the sponsors pay for everything. There was a point in time where we were asking for some reimbursement um, because we had a budget. Uh, it, it actually was uh, – it took some effort to, to go that route. So it's, it's been found to be easier just to have sponsor pay for everything and not worry about uh, involving the foundation to ask for money. Be that as it may, we do, as I alluded to before, try to run an annual larger conference where we have many, many vendors who come in and lots and lots of revenue from ticket sales and from vendors, uh, or specifically sponsors, I should say, where we'll give those proceeds to the OWASP Foundation itself to, to keep things moving and keep people paid and things like that. But you will be going uh, working hand-in-hand -hand with the Foundation itself to do things like sign contracts to help you get sponsors and things like that. And that's really what the objective here is. Now with the funding, yeah, if you don't have food, you don't have drinks, you don't have a venue, you don't have meetups, you don't have a chapter, that's it. You need money to do this. Uh, in most cases, you got to get that sponsorship. You can probably get a couple things for free here and there. Not everything. So I've already talked about this to the extent I'm going to. The other big thing here is our audience and the outreach. Uh, you don't need to talk about the OWASP top 10 every month. You can keep it light and formal. You can talk about whatever you want to talk about. Just make sure you're giving people what they need to keep coming back. Once you have the sponsors, once you have the speakers, once you have the venue, once you've cleared all the logistical hurdles, now it's time to get down to the quality, making sure people are getting what they need, what they want. You're listening to the feedback and you're providing that to your audience. The last thing here is, of course, if you're not having fun, <laughs> you're not doing it right. <laughs> uh, and of course, you're not getting paid for any of this. That's not how it works. It's all volunteer work for a nonprofit organization. <laughs> uh, it is a lot, of, a lot of work. I highly suggest getting a team to help you with this. And the other thing here, of course, is you know we're still are in a pandemic, so you got to plan accordingly. Other than that, I'm here to help answer questions. I'll be in the Slack channel. You can reach me on LinkedIn. You can follow me on Twitter. And you, of course, can always check my website if you need any offensive security services. That's you know, neither here nor there. But I'm going to throw it in because why not? Other than that, my 30 minutes is pretty much up. And that's all I have for you. Thank you so much.